Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Real Film Nerds Podcast. My name is Matt, one of your two hosts. Christmas is almost here. Whoopity doo! I'm not a huge fan of Christmas. I don't even put up my Christmas tree. I gave it to my damn sister, and she loves it. She thinks it's the prettiest tree she's ever seen. Anyways, Real Film Nerds episode number 351. We're talking about the latest Nicolas Cage film, Mysterious Mike Talent. How are you today, since I can't see you? Uh, I'm doing good, Matt. I'm doing good. You, You don't like Christmas, Matt? I thought you really liked Christmas. Nope. I think Christmas is bullshit. Okay. All right. You don't like getting gifts? You don't like uh, the holiday cheer? None of that? Bah humbug. Eggnog in your bourbon? No? No, it dilutes the bourbon. Oh, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. (laughs) Plus, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be rum. I think it's rum and eggnog, isn't it? I think it's anything you want to put in it, honestly. I I, I think all, everybody does stuff, whatever. They do whatever they want, like vodka nog? Yeah, dude. You want to ha- you want to have some vodka nog? You want to have some gin nog, man? Go for it. Kahlua nog? Um, I'm sure people do Kahlua nog, yeah, for sure. Cocaine nog? Yeah. Do you, do you partake in any, like, the peppermint? Uh, I really like some peppermint shakes, man. Those are tasty. Uh, no, dude, I, shakes are for the rich, so I don't really get those. When I go out to eat, I get, like, the most cheap, cheap, basic thing I can. I'm not fancy. Shakes, no, that's way, four or five dollars for a drink, I still can't wrap my head around that shit. Although, that's what, like, a good fucking Pepsi or iced tea is now. It's four or five bucks now? Yeah, whenever you go out to eat at, like, Red Robin or, like, Olive Garden or any of those places, at least here in P-Town, a soda just a regular soda at a sit-down restaurant is four four dollars i believe wow man that's a that's a high profit item uh yeah especially since i'm sure it's gone up but i would be shocked if the cost of that soda is over a dollar oh man i'm sure it's gone up but it's (laughs) it it hasn't gone up that much yeah because back when i worked in the restaurant industry um the general manager sat down and we calculated it out i think it was 13 cents for an entire like session of someone sitting down and having like three or four sodas yeah yeah when i worked at the movie theater it cost the movie theater uh like a penny a penny and a half now granted this is many many years ago now but yeah back uh, in the 60s yeah yeah but the syrup is cheap um really for how much it, it can make uh, CO2 costs nothing. The funny part about the CO2 was like, <laughs> it was like a dollar or two for a giant like CO2 uh, contain like um tank. Yeah, it but still it was, costs something. I yeah, mean, yeah. The no, equipment and everything isn't free. Yeah, yeah, but the delivery was like like fifty bucks. It was funny because it was like the actual thing was cheap, but the delivery was like where all the money was. Hmm. That's so. strange. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, it's, you know, if your Circle K's and your whatever the world's your convenience stores can sell soda for like 60 cents or whatever, you know they're not losing money. So um, the most expensive thing for soda is honestly the, the, um, the cup. The cup, the lid, the straw, that costs way more than actual soda. But in the restaurants, it's a reusable glass, so it's not costing them anything. Right. In a restaurant, it is, is cheaper. I mean, they still have to wash the glass, so there's a little bit. But it's it's you get to use it over and over, so pays well, for itself. Well, all right, Mike. I'm going to steer us back on topic, although it's interesting. My complaint about spending money on dumb shit gets us that hardcore off topic. But it's just a lesson. I'm at the point, like, I'll be honest, I, I, to go back off topic, when I go out to eat, I might as well just get a beer because it's like a dollar or two more than just having a soda now where it used to be like $2 for a soda and $6 for a beer. Now it's $4 for a soda and $6 for a beer. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, you might as well just get a beer, man. 
just get a beer. That's our lesson today. Real Film Nerds podcast episode number 351. Just get a beer. All right, dude. Let's get back on topic. What are, what are we talking about? Okay, so we're. Oh, I was alluding to it earlier when I was introducing you, Mike, and you were still tucking your balls away. Um, this week we're chatting, chatting about uh, Nicolas Cage's latest film. He says it's the best movie he's ever done, or at least the best performance he's ever done, uh, Dream Scenario. Mike, uh, why don't you give us the rundown for this incredible A24 film? All right, Matt. So, uh, Dream Scenario was uh, written, directed, and edited by Christoph uh, Borgelli. It is starring Nick Cage, uh, Julianne Nicholson, Lily Bird, and Jessica Clement. And this movie is about a hapless family man finds his life turned upside down when millions of strangers suddenly start seeing him in their dreams. When his nightmare appearances take a nightmare sh- or nighttime appearances take a n- nightmarish turn paul is forced to navigate his newfound stardom well mike i can't keep you like in check since i can't see you because you're not wearing pants so you had to turn off your camera but uh mike let's just go ahead i will have you start what is your first impressions or your first desires or likes or dislikes of this movie um I didn't really know what I was getting into, Matt, with this one. I had, hadn't really seen a trailer. All I knew was from what you had said that Nick Cage had claimed it was his best movie. And, uh, you know, it's it, it gets you thinking, Matt. I, I don't know about... I liked it, but it gets you thinking. It's, it's an interesting kind of uh, look at uh, society in some ways. So, all right, Mike, I did watch the trailer. I did see the trailer for this in the theaters, too. And I enjoyed this film, but not in the way that I anticipated enjoying this film. I really thought this was going to be a heck of a lot more of a comedy. But I do have to say the performance by Nicolas Cage is incredible. He is at the top of his game in this film. He is just absolutely amazing all the different roles he plays, all the different scenarios, all the different dreams. He's just, he did such a phenomenal job on this. I really hope he gets nominated. We all know he won't. It's Nicolas Cage, but I would love for him to get nominated for some awards for this one. Yeah. Yeah. No, he did have an amazing performance. Uh, He nailed the character. He nailed the character. So Mike, this is a difficult one to discuss without spoiling it too much i will do my best but um my biggest letdown is basically i thought this was going to be a lot funnier i thought there was going to be more dream sequences i thought there's going to be more zaniness more kind of chaos and craziness i expected a little bit of a life lesson out of it and some uh social commentary but not at the level we got i mean this is social commentary like shoved down your throat almost from beginning to end. Yeah. Oh yeah. It definitely is very, uh, social commentary. Um, but it was an interesting concept It's a very interesting concept. I really liked how the character, um, that Nick play cage plays, uh, which is a professor at a university is, adamantly opposed to uh like this kind of uh, thing even happening or, or or like trying to explain it away it was it was interesting it was very interesting yeah he's uh he's just a nobody and he is fine with that he is fine with being just an average guy he actually prides himself on being forgettable and then uh it's like the flick of a switch he's this giant celebrity within a day or two and it's fucking chaos basically yeah it's uh it's it definitely poses the question if all of a sudden you were famous like you something went viral how would you handle that and it it is definitely an interesting look at that and and sometimes i think we forget as a society how all of a sudden becoming famous can be really such a huge burden when you weren't really ready for it or weren't really expecting it. 
Well, you don't even have to talk about just becoming famous. I mean, just being famous in general, a lot of the shit that Paul Matthews, Nicolas Cage's character, goes through, a lot of these celebrities have gone through for a large part of their lives, especially as children. I mean, imagine if you were a child star and you went through this crap, you know? Oh, yeah, dude. It'd be rough. It'd be rough for sure. Well, and today, social media has only made it 100 times worse, not just on the general public, but especially on celebrities. Now, they can get on there, and there's a 100,000 people that tell them how terrible they are, and 5,000 say they're great. Because, you know, people tend to put stuff out when it's negative. They don't tend to put stuff out when it's positive. Yeah, it's true. I don't know why we do that. I don't know. Maybe we just love to complain. I mean, I know I do. Yeah, like Matt, when you when you watch a really good movie, do you go out and tell ten of your closest friends? Well, uh, I tell more than ten of my closest friends because I'm on the radio every morning on KYCA, so I tell a lot of people. Okay, all right, all right, fair, fair. But when you have a good experience at the restaurant, do you go and tell ten people? Uh, no, I usually only tell people if they ask me or if they are like, "Hey, what'd you do last night?" I'll be like, "Oh man." I went out to uh, McDonald's last night. They finally had the McRib back. Fucking phenomenal. Gotcha, gotcha. But So if you had a bad experience with McDonald's, you just go out and tell 20, 30 people, right? Shit, dude. I had a bad experience when I was a child multiple times over, and I still tell people that story, and it's been like 30 years. (laughs) Gotcha. Well, you're a perfect example of society, man. I mean, seriously, dude, when you got to replace a toilet, you know it's a bad experience at McDonald's. <laughs> uh, he, he, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a bad experience at McDonald's. When it, when it come home and you blow up the toilet so much that you literally have to get a new one. Yeah, it melts the some bitch. Man. That's, that's some heat. How, yeah, how many of those uh, McRibs did you have, dude? That was before I was eating McRibs. That was just a quarter pounder with cheese. Just a quarter pounder with cheddar, not a double? Nope. It was a regular back in the day. It was before the double. Oh, man, you're right. They they didn't used to have a double. <laughs> Although they did have the McRib back then. Okay, all right. Mike, have you had any McRibs since they're back in functioning? No, Matt, I haven't uh, taken the weird uh, formed meat uh, in my mouth yet, but I- I'll I'll get it. I don't know why, Mike. You're a huge fan of having really saucy foreign meats shoved down your throat. <laughs> yeah, you know it. <laughs> I do. I do. You know, Mags talks about it all the time. She's like, it's one of those things we just can't get Mike away from. He loves his weird meats. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I like me some gyros, 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 heroes. Dude, I love me some heroes. Those are good. I, Mr. Mister Gyro is freaking phenomenal in Anthem, by the way. That's where I go to get my gyros. It's so much meat and, you know, the white tzatziki sauce. Oh, man. Love the tzatziki sauce. Anyways, okay, back on topic, Mike. We're talking a lot about fucking food on this one. Jesus, can you tell I haven't had dinner yet? <laughs> Yeah, dude, we are talking a lot about food. Okay, back back on topic, man. I don't think or, I can talk too or much Mike, more. Or, Mike, I was going to say, maybe in addition to food, let's talk about a beverage. Yes, yes. I don't think I can talk too much more without spoiling it. So, on that note and your note, Matt, what are you drinking this fine morning, evening, afternoon? <sighs> well, Mike, thank you for asking, kind sir. I am drinking a delightful beer from the Lone Star State. I have several of them, literally a case at least. Shiner Bach. Nice, dude. Nice. Um, I uh, found uh, some extra Oktoberfests uh, in the store. I don't know where they came from, but we got them. So I'm drinking a Sam Adams Oktoberfest. Were they on sale? Uh, no, they weren't, but I was just excited to get some more. That's a bullshit, dude. Although, all the way in December, they should be on like $5 for a six-pack. Uh, yeah. Well, I wish. Well, I remember that's how I got turned on to uh, uh, Sam and Ub's Oktoberfest. I mean, I was totally illegal my freshman year in college at the age of 21. Uh, <laughs> we we purchased a closeout on Sam Adams' Oktoberfest 
I don't even remember how many cases. I just remember there was a lot of them. And I know you saw it too. The uh the um sides of the uh, beer case stapled to the dorm room wall. Yes, I I do remember your dorm. It was uh it was an interesting uh area. Yeah, dude, we had one whole wall. I think it was just Sam Adams Oktoberfest. Yeah, I think you did. And it was not both sides of the box. We were, the rule was it was only one side of the box. Yeah, no, you, you guys, you guys polished uh, some Sierra Nevadas and 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 many others. Yeah, yeah. My roommate Lincoln was obsessed with Sierra Nevada Pale Ale and Bigfoot. He loved Bigfoot when it was around. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I could tell. I mean, barley wine, man. Woo. So, anyways, all right, Mike. I will get us back on topic, even though that is still kind of on topic. Uh, Mike, let's see if you found an interesting one this week. What is this week's? Dreamy dad joke. I got dad jokes. I don't think they understand though. Gotta think I'm funny. Other people never laugh though. Dad jokes. All right, dude. This this one's kind of funny. Um, Mags would like this one. My new girlfriend works at the zoo. That's it. I think she's a keeper. Oh, okay, okay. There we go. I was gonna say there was a long pause there. That's more of a statement than a joke, but I understand it is a joke and. Uh, so can you change that to your new wife? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess I could, I could do that. But yeah, anyway, that's fun. Okay, I good, thought, good. I thought that was a fun, fun joke. It, it's very topical for your uh, most recent anniversary last month. Yes, yes, it is. And remind me what you did for your anniversary again. You went somewhere crazy and fun. No, we were sick. <laughs> you poor bastard. Dude, you know you still got to take her to a uh, Sandals resort after we spent our time together. That was so funny, dude, when you guys were here for Thanksgiving. And she was saying, um, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, he only takes you to those couples resorts. That shit was <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, yeah. No, I still owe her a Sandals resort trip somewhere. Although, Mike, I have to say, I did keep it consistent, though. Um, I know you prefer to be Little Spoon. I know she does, you know, lets you be Little Spoon. So I kept it consistent when we were at Sandals. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, dude, you need to get her on that trip. You're going to have to probably bribe uh, all your family members to rotate watching the children while you're gone for two weeks. But, dude, that's an experience both of you should have together. It would be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's, uh, yeah. Getting someone to watch the kids for a while is is uh, is the tricky part. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, find a homeless man or something. He could be warm for a couple weeks. Dude, he'd love it. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. All right. Well, I don't know if the kids would like it as much. Maybe he's cool. Maybe he's a little nutty and he's off his meds. Maybe he thinks he's a pirate. I mean, they would love that. <laughs> my my daughter does like pirates right now, but I don't know if she really likes real pirates. And then if he rolls up in a Tonka truck, like a like a backhoe or something, your son will love him. So the pirate heavy machinery operator, perfect babysitter right there. Yes, yes. I uh, I will put an ad in the paper looking for a homeless pilot or uh, pirate uh, heavy machine operator babysitter. Uh, I don't know if you're going to find him in the internet. You know, I mean, the internet, the newspaper, the newspaper isn't doing so well. So you might want to go with the internet. That's what I was trying to say. That joke failed. Boom. Well, I, I, I just don't know if I'll be able to reach him if he's homeless on the internet. So I, I figured if I went through some sort of print media. Dude, you clearly don't know enough homeless people. All homeless people have cell phones. Oh, oh, okay. No, I didn't know. Dude, it's seriously a thing. It's fucking weird. It's really weird. They all have cell phones. So they I pay don't, for that? Yeah, I don't know where the fuck they mail the bills. Oh, uh, maybe they have direct deposit? Like, why don't they just have Zelle or something? Why don't they just put their Zelle number out? That would work. I see people do that shit all the time on their cars. Just married. You know, give us at Venmo name and whatever. I see that all the time. So why not just really? get like a tattoo of that shit? People are asking for money that just got married. What if they married, didn't just get married? Married or prom or whatever. It's fucking weird. They put it on the back of their cars and shoe, shoe polish. 
Dude, that seems weird. I don't. You've never seen that? No, dude. How I've the never fuck seen do that. I live in a little ass town and I've seen that, and you live in a much larger town? Oh uh, well, I I don't know. Maybe maybe I don't get out enough. I'll I'll start. That that's it. I'm gonna start driving. I'm gonna drive around until I find one. No, no, that's I'm probably gonna donate true. Donate them money, dude. I think that is a problem. I think you don't get out of the house enough. So it really doesn't matter where you live, Mike, if you don't leave your house. Okay. All right, that's true. Okay, all right, all right. I will stop fucking around. Mike, how does Dream Scenario relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? All right, Matt, this one was tough. The This is a pretty small movie with not very many actors in it, and... Uh, seems like not a lot of people have worked on the MCU, but I was able to find at least one person. Uh, Frederick uh, Bergen uh, worked on Ant-Man and Wasp uh, Quantumania in the uh, visual effects department. Well, very good, Mike. Let's see what's more difficult, this week's film or next week's film. That'll be real interesting. I imagine I'll be able to find some special effects or something for next week. We'll see. We'll see. We will find out. But we are not announcing what film we're doing yet because I have to talk about that. Uh, When we get to that section, we're going to now spoil Dream Scenario. And Mike, ready, set, go. All right, Matt. Uh, Dream Scenario uh, was just a real interesting movie to me. And I really think Nick Cage's uh, performance on this was just was was great with the uh his character and all the different kind of sequences. I wish there were more though. I do wish there were more sequences cuz the the scene when uh he's interviewing like his uh class when it first starts happening kind of and it's 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 kind of gone viral. Dude, that was great. I wanted more of that. I'm with you on that. I want more of the chaos and the dreams and There wasn't enough of that. And that's where I really think the comedy should have come in because there was so much potential for this to be just fucking hilarious and then turn into a massive horror slash nightmare. And it just kind of has comedy and then it just kind of fizzles. And then it's all on the on the horror slash, you know, scary stuff. Yeah, it had a little bit, but like the downward spiral, man, it was a great like continuing downward spiral it just got worse and worse i was like oh hell i'm not saying it was bad dude it was very good but i just wish there was more comedy and more highs before we peaked and went over the edge of the mountain you know what i mean yeah yeah dude the advertising agency freaking ridiculous and i totally think that would be how it would be oh exactly that was one of the best scenes was the advertising agency not my favorite scene though, but Michael Sarah with his cameo in it and you know, his uh uh couple agents and all that stuff, all they're looking to do is fucking capitalize, man. That's all they wanted was just to get paid. Yeah, no, it, 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 um oh man. Well, I we'll get we'll get to it, Matt, but towards the end there when we get to the um more commercialization of uh the stuff. I love that sequence as well. Um, oh, are you talking about the uh, invention? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. invention. Yes. Uh huh. Yep, yep. That was really good. I, I kind of felt that this where that's where it was kind of eventually going, but it straight up turned into like an episode of uh, Futurama because that that's something they did in Futurama. It's really funny. Oh, they did. Okay, well, we'll, we'll get to that part. Uh, I don't think we're quite ready for that, but. One thing that I felt was an interesting question when I was watching this, Matt. So everybody's kind of dreaming about um, the same guys in the dream every night. And it wasn't really until there was a news story that everybody realized it was actually a real person. So if he would have never just done the news story, would any of that stuff have happened? I think it would have been added eventually because his uh, students would have been posting about it. And so it would have probably caught on and gone viral because 
even without him doing the news story, I think it was still entering people's dreams because that's how they came up with the invention. Yes, yes, he was entering people's dream. And then and then uh Matt the the uh I don't even know what you want to call it, but the scene in which uh after that all of a sudden everything stops. Do you think it was because of his kind of his feelings were Oh, a hundred percent. My, the, so my buddy that I went to the theater with, uh, my buddy Clint, he and I had this discussion after the film. He w- really wasn't a big fan of this movie, which is too bad, but I I've noticed, and we'll talk about Ma Hinchon. You'll hear her take on it, but, um, the older generation, uh, especially my mom's age really just, she had a really hard time wrapping her mind around this film. She just did. And she really didn't like it and she didn't really understand it. But um, my buddy Clint, he's much older than me, too, and he really, same thing. But what he caught on to, and we were discussing it in the parking lot after watching it at Harkins, was that if you notice, the people's dreams or reactions or whatever happens in the dreams correlates with Nicolas Cage's character's mood. When he's happy um, and go lucky, he's there and he's helping people. Um, in the beginning, when he first starts popping up, he's thinking of himself as this average guy and no one knows who he is. And he's just kind of there and he doesn't really do much of anything. That's what he does in the, in their dreams. And then all of a sudden, when there's sexy time, there's some sexy time dreams. And then when he's having a bad time, it immediately turns into this horror movie. Like, And he's killing people. And so I think what was going into people's heads directly correlates with... Um, Paul Matthews character's feelings and what he was going through, not when he was sleeping, but when he was alive. And that's what he was projecting to people's dreams. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I kind of think, uh, was happening because the, the scene that kind of, uh, stops the cycle of badness was, uh, was real interesting and very odd uh, I mean, not odd, but like like an incident happens, and then it's like, well, I guess that's over, and then it it really was over. It was weird, you know, like dude, we're in spoilers. You can just fucking talk about it. It's fine. I know, but it's so weird with the the finger and the the like, just squirting everywhere. Well, I think it's because he took her finger completely off in the door. He did. He did. He he. It was kind left. of odd. But I don't know what the finger was doing there. I was trying to figure out, like, yeah, how her hand got caught in the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, what? How did? And it was their pinky of all fucking things, not like an index finger or something. Yeah, why would you have your fingers? I I don't know. If you're trying to hold a door, it, yeah, whatever. Dude, it matches the rest of the oddness of some of the movie. Like, my opinion, one of the best sex scenes ever in a film, and they didn't even have sex. Yeah, <laughs> that was my favorite scene by far. That shit was just ridiculous and hilarious. Just, oh my god, it was so ridiculous from the start to him standing in the corner to you know the reality of the situation, and then he ends it with a fart. I mean, Jesus, dude, that was so funny. <laughs> Several farts, dude. Oh, it was so good, so good just ridiculous Dude. man because the uh, the correlation you know how many i mean i'm not gonna you know out you mike in your love of emily blunt but uh you know how many times have you you know dreamt about emily emily blunt you know going to town and then it happens in a reality and it's a massive disappointment that i mean that's probably what it really is in real life i, I would hope not being a you know a massive attractive celebrity but seriously you never know yeah, no. Uh, it was interesting when, you know, if you tried to act out the fantasy, which, you know, uh, you know the, the she clearly was trying to do, and it was just terrible. It was just so bad. Yeah, that that is my favorite scene of the whole film. It was just stupid, ridiculous. Um, she was very cute. She was very sensual. And then it ends with a fart on top of it, just... Oh my god, dude! It was so great. It was so great. Um, the uh, 
I felt bad for like Nick Cage's daughter who is dreaming of him. The first, like, that's like the first opening sequence. Well, actually. And it ends with something very similar like that, too. But it's interesting. That's how they use it to kind of roll in because it makes sense at first, right? His daughter's dreaming about him. And then his he they run across an ex girlfriend who hadn't seen him in a while, and she was dreaming about him. And so it's just like, oh, no big deal. And then his students are dreaming about him. And then all of a sudden it explodes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it does explode. And then like even in his his daughter's first dream that you see in the opening sequence, there's some weird shit happening. Yeah. Yeah. And he again, that's where the thing where he's not thinking very highly of himself, where he's just literally standing there. It's his own daughter and letting it happen. And he's just kind of exists. Oh, and what what'd you think about like the mental illness guy who like broke in, dude? That was creepy. Oh, yeah, dude, that was super creepy, but that is celebrity to like a T, man. Usually even worse than that. I mean, not to call out the most famous one, but the Jodie Foster case, you know, after she was in a taxi driver. Oh, yeah. No, the uh but it it was it you felt like violated after you like it was just creepy man dude they did a great job with it and they that was the intention was to make you feel like that celebrity that's being stalked and practically murdered i mean you know the the taxi driver thing you know he went and shot ronald reagan to try and impress jody foster a kid at the time yeah fucking crazy Um, man when mental illness goes goes unchecked it's fucking nightmarish and i don't want to go down that rabbit hole but our country's in trouble when it comes to mental illness it's only gotten worse yeah yeah um and then the the scene afterwards when uh the police uh officers explaining like well what can we do like he lifts off all this stuff and he's just like we can't do that. We can't do that. Like, it was just like, I don't know. It was real interesting. I, I like that sequence. I thought it was well done. Yeah. And he was basically, the police officer was basically saying like, you better fucking move because everybody knows where you live. You know, that was straight up out of like being a celebrity. That's why celebrities have big walls and live in gated communities and all that shit is to keep the fans and the crazies out. Yeah. And I was yeah. having a realization this was actually before this movie, but I mean, you know why celebrities have such giant ass homes, Mike? Why is that? Because they can't go anywhere. Think about it. They can't go to the gym. They can't go to, you know, all these places that we take for granted. So they need to have it at their home. You know? Oh. So that's why they have theaters and salons and and chefs and all that. Some of it's over the fucking top, don't get me wrong. But uh, if they're big enough, yeah, dude. I mean, think about Taylor Swift walking into a Starbucks. Yeah, that'd be a problem. Yeah, I'm just using an extreme, you know, scenario because Taylor Swift is, you know, at the super top of her game. She's probably the biggest celebrity out there right now as far as fandom, I would say. Like, she's on the level of the Beatles, you know, kind of thing. And think about it. If she just wanted to go have a nice sit-down dinner somewhere... Like, they would have to really strategically plan it out, clear out half the restaurant, you know, all that shit. Where you and I, we could just walk into a Starbucks, we could walk into Circle K, we can go to Red Robin, it's not a big deal. So, think about it, if she wanted to work out at a gym five days a week, and then people noticed her routine, yeah, it's, she can't, you can't. Yeah, all right. I'm not trying That's to justify true. their excess, I think it's fucking ridiculous, but I understand why they do some of the things they do. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. No, uh, th- this just brings into light, like, fame and 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 social influence and, like, uh, you know, this guy who's actually done nothing to anybody, but they're all terrified of him because of their dreams. Like, it just ruins his life. Like, that is nuts, dude. But it makes sense. It's just weird. Well, what do you think of this, Mike? A lot of people think the analogy, we know what the main analogy is. You know, celebrityism, uh, becoming popular, be it 
uh, through social media or whatever. It's just becoming super famous overnight kind of thing. But do you feel that his descent and his slide into being literally offending people to the point where they can't even look at him? Do you think that's a statement on cancel culture? Because that's what a lot of reviewers, specifically uh, conservative reviewers, are mentioning. Do you feel it's a commentary on cancel culture or not? Uh, I don't know. I suppose it it could be a little bit, but I feel like it was just, it shows how, I don't know, fickle the mob can be and how they can really ruin, like, I mean, he couldn't even eat at that restaurant. They're like, please leave. And he gets in that fight and like... I mean, I, I almost wonder the the scene where he's getting picked up outside the hospital. I'm like, how did he even get treatment? Right, right. Well, and this is where I kind of see it. It's a combination of a bunch of different things. Like, I feel that the scenes in the restaurant was almost at the level of, like, racism. Like, specifically racism in, like, the, the 50s and 60s. You know, where African Americans couldn't go to certain restaurants and hotels and places to eat. Because, you know, they're like, we don't want you here. We don't like the look of you. You know, that that kind of shit. Spits in his food, all that shit. But then I feel some of it later on turns into the cancel culture when the mob mentality starts coming out. Instead of it just being the individuals attacking him, it's now his entire class of students attacking him. And that's that mob mentality, which borders on the cancel culture for me. I don't know if it's so much a statement on it. But I can see where the the other reviewers are kind of seeing that, where, you know, he's just being himself and this entire class is trying to get him kicked out of campus and lose his job just for being himself. Yeah, yeah. And that was like right after the they were trying to do, um, was it like group therapy? And then they all like gang up on him and then like someone tags his car. Yeah. yeah. Like that that was ridiculous. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't want to say it is cancel culture, but there it, it feels like it, especially as the mob mentality. Because you know the old saying, Mike, um, a person is smart, but people are dumb. And it's true. For some reason, when a collective of people gets together, they do dumb, bad shit, and they don't use their minds anymore. And that's clearly what they were saying in the film. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um I don't know. I did like this movie. It really gets you thinking. It's it's different. It's it's a different. Uh, and then as it progresses, Matt, then there's the invention. The uh, what did they call it? I, I I feel like it had a dumb name. Wasn't it like oral or something? Something ring. I don't remember what it was. <sighs> I Aura don't know. or I don't know. I don't remember. I mean, dude, I saw this shit on Thursday. It's been a few days. Yeah, I should have wrote it down. Yeah, I, I mean, I saw it on Thursday too, Matt. But uh, it was that that sequence of having like the people that go advertise in dreams. I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is crazy, and they'd absolutely do it if they could. Yeah, that's straight up an episode out of Futurama. There, I don't think it was a full episode, but there's mentions of it where. Um, Fry, the main character in Futurama, uh, is recently in the future, and he wakes up wanting to buy this certain pair of underwear and wanting to buy this soda and all this other shit, and he's like, I don't understand why. And all the other characters who grew up in the year 3000 uh, explain, oh, yeah, that's just subliminal messaging in your dreams. They're trying to get you to do that stuff. <laughs> it's, that's straight up where they got it from in this movie. Dude, I thought it was nuts. I thought it was nuts. And yeah, it just, it changes so much. And then he ends up getting a divorce and all that stuff. It it was pretty sad. Oh yeah. No, it's very sad. When it, when it hits that, that peak and it starts falling down the other side of the mountain. I mean, shit, dude, it's not even like a slow descent. It's like over a cliff. It just is absolute fucking chaos. And it is very sad and very depressing. And that's where the horror elements and the terrifying elements come out. But I, I think it works. I think it works really well. Really, really well. 
I don't like the ending. I think ending on a dream sequence of him basically trying to implant his dreams into his wife's head to get back with her. I don't think that was a great way to end it. But they started with a dream. They ended it with a dream. I understand what they were going for. I liked that his book tour, he thought he had written a book about something, and it turns out like the marketing people changed it, and then it was just more about like uh, your nightmares or whatever. Yeah. Dude, that was messed up. Yep. Well, and they uh, changed it in translation and all kinds of shit, and it was basically what it was like being, you know, the nightmare of people's dreams, basically. <laughs> Yeah, it was like, how does it feel to be Freddy Krueger? And like, then they took pictures of him with the like the hands, dude. Yep. Oh, it was, it was so, it was so like, what, what did you do? They're like, well, you want money, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, the marketing people take over, but then he was able to, you know, buy his own house and, you know, do all that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. Now. I- it it was so real in some ways and and i i don't know it was just it was it was a good thinking movie and i'm glad it wasn't too long matt was it like an hour and 40 minutes or something hour and 42 yep yeah yeah no I like the, that. these are the kind of movies i really really like because i like the thinking movies you know one of my favorites is donnie darko which i don't know if we'll ever get to review that movie on here but we'll get to it eventually hopefully someday but uh, um, I love the thinking person movies. I like the movies that make you help hold a discussion when you walk out of the theater. Uh, I like the ones that when you wake up in the morning, you're thinking about that movie. That That's a good movie is when it makes you think. It doesn't matter what the subject matter is, but if it makes you feel something, makes you think about something, make you question life, make you question you know reality, I think those are good movies. I really do. Yeah. No, this this was good. It was it somewhat reminded me of um uh Dark Mirror episode in some ways, you know? Yeah, um Black Mirror. Black Mirror, sorry. Yeah, yeah and Black there's Mirror. a new season of that coming out by the way. But yeah, Black Mirror and Twilight Zone, all that shit is like some of my favorite shows, man. They really are. They're they're phenomenal. I love I like the really hardcore sci-fi stuff that makes you think because this is almost on the brink of sci-fi. Yes, it's a comedy. Yes, it's a horror movie. But it's also sci-fi when you start bringing in the ability to enter people's dreams for advertising. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what, what did you think about the kill sequence? Or Well, I don't know if it was a kill sequence, but like when Nick Cage was running at his daughter. Dude, that was terrifying. Oh, yeah, dude. That, that seemed like that was straight up out of um, like The Shining. You know, I was expecting him to like blast through the door and be like, here's daddy, you know, something like that. <laughs> Dude, that one was like, and there was lots of random ones that were like thrown up on the screen, but the, most of them are pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. The, he, again, he played all those roles, man, and he did phenomenal. I just, his acting is on another level in this film. It really is. He, he's just, I know people love and people hate him, but dude, how you got to respect the level of talent here in this film. You have to. Yeah, dude. So speaking of talent, um, me and your, uh, uh, buddy, Eric, you know, super fan of the real film nerd show. Um, we were discussing, you know, Nick Cage's talent and acting in this film. And so uh, Nicolas Cage is the Mike talent of acting. Oh, yeah? What is that? Well, you. You're Mike talent, so you're the Mike talent of podcasting. He's the Mike talent of acting. That's how good Nick Cage is. Okay. All right. Yeah. I like it, Matt. I like it. Nick talent. Okay. So we'll just call him Mr. Talent? Like you. He's like your cousin or brother. Because he's so talented. Yeah. yeah, this is going over your head, isn't it? God damn it. I'm trying to... It was funny when me and Eric were talking about it. <laughs> Shit. Fine. That's it. I'm putting a stop to this. Mike, how many reels do you give Dream Scenario? Uh, I give this one uh, four reels out of five. I really I really enjoyed it. It was uh, quite, quite good. I, I wish there was a little bit more with some of the sequences of Dreams. Wow, dude, we are a little divided on this. I I enjoyed this movie quite a bit, but I I am nowhere in the four territory. 
I uh, uh, I like I said, I wanted more comedy. I really was hoping it was going to be funnier, but it was not. So I guess maybe I just had that preconceived notion after watching the trailer, and you didn't. But uh, Mike, I give this one three out of five. Reads. Oh wow! Oh okay, all right. Yeah, um, I didn't know it was supposed to be funny. I know it's labeled as a comedy horror, but. I guess there were some comedic elements in it, but I'd say for the most part, it's pretty serious, most of the movie. When you get a minute, sit down and watch the trailer, because the trailer really comes off as it's being a comedy. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll watch it. So it was cut up differently. Yeah, clearly. Clearly. So, okay, Mike, um, on the radio, if people were listening uh, and also listening to the podcast, all one of you, thanks, Mom, Um it may be Eric, too. I don't know if he's started listening to the radio or not yet. But um, I announced that we were going to do Silent Night, the uh, latest John Woo, Woo film. The uh, last time he did an American film was uh, 2003. So I was really looking forward to uh, what happened during that 20-year gap. But I guess I will have to go see it on my own because I had to change the film. Ma Hinshaw is not getting Silent Night down in our hometown theater. And so we are going to do a film that is probably going to drive her just as nuts because it's all subtitles and she can't read them. We're going to talk about Godzilla Minus One next week. All right. Godzilla Minus One. Uh, it did really well in the box office this uh, this last week. So, uh I, I guess I'm gonna have to dust off the old glasses and 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 or spectacles and and read the movie. Well, Mike, I'm interested to see your take on it, uh, especially with how the Marvel Cinematic Universe just recently decided to end the run of the Marvels. I think it officially comes to a close this week. Uh, worst performing Marvel Cinematic Universe film to date. Had a budget of over $200 million, I believe. Yeah, I think you're right, dude. I think over $200 million. I don't remember exact, but it's over 200 The CGI is pretty questionable in spots, really good in others. Uh, this movie, Godzilla Minus One, was made for $15 million. And it has already made that back and then some. Wow. I think I think this might be um, Matt. Remember when the the uh, shoot now the names uh, eluding me, but the the South African uh, movie District Nine, District Nine, dude. That movie was made for not a lot of money, uh, and it was fantastic. Oh, dude, one of my favorite movies, one of my favorite sci-fi movies of our generation, easily. I I love that film. It was so well done. Uh, the CGI, everything looks just really great. I really wish they would have come out with a District 10. There's still rumors of it coming out, but they're just rumors. I don't think they ever will. But uh, yeah, that was um, Neil Blomkamp, I believe, right? Uh, yes. Yes, it was. Yeah, he's just fantastic. And I, I really, really, really love that movie. And so uh, we'll see how it goes. You know, I've heard the, uh, not that I've watched too many reviews, but I was not anticipating um, reviewing this film because of the subtitles. And so I watched some, uh, just people talking about it, not spoiling stuff. And they're just blown away by how good the CGI is and how good Godzilla looks. And I'm excited for this film. I really am. I didn't think I was going to get a chance to see it and review it for the pod. I was just going to go see it on my own. So, uh, Dude, excited for next week's pod. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's going to be a good one. Um, I, I don't know much about it, but I'm ready to see it. Dude, it's Godzilla. You can't go yeah. wrong with Godzilla, and I believe <laughs> that's it's, true. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be a reboot of the franchise for modern day. I'm pretty sure. Um, and those of you who are wondering, it is a Japanese film. It is subtitled 100%. So if you don't want to read for, oh, let me click on the IMDb to see how long it is. Um, if you don't want to read for two hours and four minutes, then you probably shouldn't go see this one. Oh, that's a lot of reading, man. Honestly, I don't think there's going to be reading the entire time. I think there's going to be a lot of action and, you know, 
monster destruction and things. But uh, yeah, I believe it's supposed to be uh, right after World War II, I'm pretty sure. Like within like the past 10 or 20 years right after World War II. So we'll see. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm excited. Well, all right. Um, Matt, I, I think, is that is that about all we have? I think that wraps it up, doesn't God, it? God, I hope so. I mean, dude, we've been talking a, lo- a lot longer than I anticipated, but still, this is a good movie. I think people should see Dream Scenario. Definitely see it at some point. Um, do you need to rush out to the theaters and see it? Probably not, but I definitely should see it at a minimum for uh, Nicolas Cage's performance. At a minimum. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think it'll be streaming uh, pretty soon. Uh, my my preview, there was only one other person, so I don't think this is going to be in the theater for too long. Uh, I, I believe Prime was getting a lot of A24 movies, so I, it'll probably be on Prime pretty soon. Nailed my question. I was going to say, I know Prime had the exclusive rights to A24 at least for the few months because they signed a big deal. I was wondering if that deal was still in place, because if it is, you'll be able to check it out on Prime. Yeah, I, I think it was for a little while. Um, I don't know if it expires at the end of this year or not. But anyway, whatever streaming service, one will be getting this, I think, fairly soon. I would say in the next few weeks. Oh, yeah, probably right before so, Christmas, I would think. Yeah, so so uh, if if I see it, uh, we'll try and remind the audience of, of where it's at. But anyway, I do think you should see it. It was really cool. It's It's a thinking man's movie. I liked it. Yes, sir. I agree. I liked it. Um, again, uh, maybe I just had too many preconceived notions going in, but I still, I really enjoyed it, and I definitely think it's worth a watch. It is, I, it's a not miss for me just because I love my Thinking Man movies. Yes, I didn't give it the world's highest score, but it's still well worth a watch. Wonderful story, creative, well done, well acted. Check it out. Okay, well, uh, with that, uh, we'll let everybody get back to whatever you were doing. Uh, so thanks for listening, everybody. And make sure to follow us on the socials, uh, Facebook, Instagram, um, X, formerly known as Twitter. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next pod. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie. Howdy, everyone. This is Ma Hinshaw, Loses Her Cookies, Episode 40, Dream Scenario. And I actually remembered the word scenario. Howdy, Matt. How are you today? Howdy, Ma Hinshaw. Woo! Y'all doing good? <laughs> Y'all. Great. Now the Southern yep. Texas draw is coming out, even though you've never lived in Texas? Hey, I, I lived there off and on, on Christmases. <laughs> That's one of those <laughs> things that is the most absolutely ridiculous about you, is how you ever talk to someone <laughs> with an accent you start imitating their accent, even if you've never, ever been there. Hey, I've been to Texas and Florida. You've never been to Australia, and I've heard you do that. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> I do. And British, don't don't play anything British, because I'll always have that Cheerio. accent. I want to hear these <laughs> accents. That. Pull these accents out. You know how sweet Ma Hinshaw in a British accent would be, Nick? It would be delightful. Oh, no, it wouldn't. Oh, hello, boys and girls. This is Ma Hitchell losing their cookies. That's Come true. On. I, I probably would. Wait, Look, I haven't watched anything with British. The I can't do that. <laughs> I have to watch something British first, you know. Okay, I, I don't think. tempt me. Oh, I okay. will put on something just to torture you. Oh, griefs. Okay, come on. Let's. Talk about the movie that I hardly understood. <laughs> because you were asleep and drunk. Just tell the listeners, no. Mom. They all know you're a raging alcoholic and you have dementia I and you not. sleep. I do. I would. Oh, whoop. <laughs> See? No, I Here had comes a Coke. the dementia. I had a Coke. 
That's what I had. I always with, have. So with it'll a keep pint of away. rum in it. No. Mm-mm. What do you call your your Coke with rum in it, Ma? You call I everything have you have that's alcoholic a hot toddy. Well, it's a beverage. Okay. See, now she's admitting it, folks. She's sitting no. there in her forty-four ounce, you know, half gallon of uh, uh, root beer filled with vodka and rum and bourbon. She likes a, uh, what would you call that? A root beer iced tea? A I Texas see. Long Island? No. A Texas Island tea? I have no idea at all. <laughs> no earthly idea. I'm just trying to it's figure out what you call your beverage you drink at the theaters. Coke. There you go. Oh, did you know she snorted her nose? So now she does I'm cocaine sorry. too. Oh, nuts. No, I have a drippy nose. Excuse me. Anyway. I heard that's the best part of doing cocaine is the drip. Oh. Uh. Anyway, this movie, I felt very sad. I did not think it was funny that much. There were a few spots. And I felt very sad for Paul. I just really, really did. Who's Paul? He's... Nicholas Cage's part. The professor who appeared in the dreams of all these different people. There you go. I'm and, glad you explained it, Mom, so our listeners know what you're talking about. Thank you. And, I mean, at first he appears and it's okay, and one of them, the pretty girl, has sex with him in her dream, but then when he sees her, he's like, well, anyhow. Spoilers! Oh, my God! Oh, well, anyhow, but so then many spoilers. His, his dreams get mucho worse. And uh, then, you know, the world has loved him for appearing in their dreams all over the world. And then, well, you know, stuff goes south. And I really, it, it was a very different uh, motion picture. And um, I'm uh, if you listen to Matt and Mike's uh, podcast, you'll learn a lot of details that I, well, either didn't understand, didn't know, or whatever. <laughs> okay. So, Mom, did you enjoy the sex scene then? Is that what you were alluding to earlier? I thought it was a little strange, but other than that... <laughs> I mean, how many times have you gotten it on and then immediately farted afterwards? Uh, not really. That's not a common practice? No, because I, no. Oh. I don't have much flatulation stuff. No. I beg but to anyway. differ. You have cleared rooms before. Oh, fiddle. That's my husband. That isn't me. So and dad farts housing. after you guys do oh, your do I don't the deed. Well, maybe. Once <laughs> I don't know. So is this but movie anyway, inspired by your real life? No. And the marketing part, well, those people. Gee, but he did end up making money. So that's okay, but he was just a totally different character than I have seen Nicolas Cage do. But at the same time, I haven't seen all his movies. So maybe he had another character like that. I don't know. So, you know. Did you enjoy the movie, Matt? I already talked about it. It's your podcast. You need to talk about it. Well, I know, but I asked you. And I'm, I enjoyed yeah, I it. Yeah, was good. I, it didn't, you know, I wasn't enthralled, but uh, I thought it was good, you know. Um, well, Mom, what enthralls you then? Well, I liked Napoleon a lot. Then why didn't you say that last week? I did. You didn't say you were enthralled by it? Well, I didn't think of that word, but I would have if I had it. Well, if I did it, but, you know. Oh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. That one was really awesome. I mean, this one 
was interesting. It, I mean, let's see. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I fell asleep a couple times, I think. But uh, but it was just, uh, I don't know. I felt sad how his life ended up when it could have been, like, really great. But all of a sudden, you know, things got really bad. And I will not explain it, but, you know. Mm-hmm. All right. Is that good enough? No. Why? <laughs> because you need to entertain your listeners. Oh, fiddle. I'm not supposed to tell them about the movie, all of it. You already talked about the sex scene in the fart round, heard around the world. Might as well spoil the whole thing. Well, no, there's a lot of more stuff that I don't need to say to spoil it, like what happened in other dreams. And then one thing that gets me is that I, I really didn't realize it was a dream and they'd have this uh, nightmarish dream and then you go, oh, that was a dream. It was like I wasn't prepared for that. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay, well, good. That's just, that's just my view, but I mean, I thought, you know, like, uh, could just show like maybe it was a person who first or something, but no, it just showed the horrible dream, you know, bam, and that was different anyway. So, how many movies have has Nicolas Cage done in 2023, Mom? I do not know. All I know is I really loved Con Air, and I loved The Rock, and I loved the the one before this one that he made that I can't think of the name of i really like that but it was funny that one was funny but uh, this one was a just totally different and so mom they, mm-hmm. dream scenario is the sixth movie of the year six wow i missed a couple hmm you i missed what well, I don't know when he made Con Air. That one's long ago, and Rock is long ago. He made six this year? Yes, ma'am. Wow, I didn't know that. He's been busy, busy, busy. So what is your favorite Nicolas Cage movie, then? Mm. Probably, I think, Con Air. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't beat an airplane crashing into Las Vegas. You know, come on. That was pretty cool. Um, Do you know where Nicolas Cage lives? No. Las Vegas. He doesn't. He He does? does. He Really? Oh, that's fascinating. So, the six movies that he did this year, I guess you would call that a movie, is um, The Old Way, Renfield, he was in the oh, flash, but one. uncredited. Sympathy for the devil, dream scenario, and the retirement plan. Wait, the retirement what? The retirement plan. Well, there was that one where it says the unbelievable something something. That was 2022. Oh, it was? Oh, okay. Well, I like that one. Great. That was 2022. I didn't see the retirement one. Came out in uh, September. Gee whiz. I need to watch that because I like him. You know. The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent came out in 2022. Along with Butcher's Crossing. And then in 2021, he did Pig and Willie's Wonderland and Prisoners of the Ghostland. I think I saw, I might have seen Pig. Oh, but I did like his Dracula. Renfield, whatever. Wait, no. It's Renfield, yeah. not Dracula. I know, but he was Dracula. Yes, but the movie was called Renfield. Right, it was. I I goofed. Okay. Well, anyway. How many, how many Academy Awards has Nicolas Cage won? Gosh, I don't know. Just one. Just one? What for? Which one? Uh, I'm pretty sure it was, uh, um, the, uh, leaving Las Vegas. I think the one where he's the, 
Oh, where he's the dad. No, he's not a dad. He's the drunk. Oh, wrong one. Yeah, leaving Las Vegas. Um, leaving Las Vegas is the one where he's a um, uh, a Hollywood screenwriter who lo- lost everything because of his alcoholism, goes to Las Vegas to drink himself to death. She. He befriends a uh, a prostitute. Mm, nope. Nineteen ninety-five. I, I didn't see that one then. How did you not see that one? It's an incredible film. It's you think you think this movie was sad? Holy hell! Oh, yeah, I think that would be real. And what didn't he do one where there was a baby or something? And yeah, Raising Arizona. Yeah, that oh, was the Coen right. Brothers' first film. Raising Arizona. That's right. Wrong state. <laughs> okay. Oh <laughs> Lord. Okay, Ma, since we are now, I'm now playing quiz on Nicolas Cage. I'm going to stop since you are not talking about the movie anymore. Um, how many cookies do you give Dream Scenario? Because I'm sure you forgot how many you gave it on Friday. I gave it three peanut butter cookies. So it's a movie you didn't really like, but you give it three. Well, yeah, but it was decent. It was a movie that just... I liked and I gave it three. Oh, okay. Well, your rating system makes no sense. Okay, I'm old, so my rating is different than yours. So no, what? you're you're too nice. You give everything positive reviews. You've never given anything a one or a two. I gave something a two once. I don't remember what it was though. Hmm. Nope, I don't remember what it was. How can I give Nicolas Cage a two or one? That would be sad. Have you watched the 60 Minutes interview with him? No. At his house in Las Vegas? No. Yeah, he's pretty, he's he's unique. He's a unique man. I believe he is. You'll have to tell me about it, but not on the podcast. It's going to make it really long. He has a bright gold, I think it's a Lamborghini. Metal. Oh. It's that metal paint looking metal paint, like super shiny. Mm. I could see that. I think he would have something like that. It's like Goldfinger. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, Ma. So since you've already seen the film for next week, uh, next yes. week we're going to watch Godzilla minus one. What? Godzilla minus one? Yeah. Why minus one? Is that what it's called? That's the title of it, yeah. Oh, I missed the minus one. Oh, well. Did you see it today or no? I certainly did. How many cookies? <laughs> uh, how can I give the cookies now? We haven't done the review yet. See, I'm Excuse just trying to get me. her to trump it up. She almost no, fell I'm for not- it, folks. No, I'm not going to say. You got to go see that. Oh yes, I still have to do research on Godzilla. Was there any? Well, you know, there's like over thirty some odd films, going back to I 1954. <laughs> so you're going to hey, be busy. I saw the first, second, third, maybe fourth or sixth. I don't think I saw what, when one you were in college. Thirties. Oh gosh, probably. Yeah, well, you were in college in the fifties, right? No. Look, I graduated in 64. Come on. Close enough. Well, it's close, but it's not in the 50s. Gee, Willikers. Anyway, yes, I have to research. I don't know uh, about if this was the true Godzilla, so I have to look it up. If it was the true Godzilla. All right. It's I called ha- Godzilla I'll... for. Okay. I, I okay, don't do you know. not understand that the reason why they released this and they released this movie actually on November 3rd of 2023 in Japan. Do you know why? Why? Because November 3rd, 2023 was the 75th anniversary of Godzilla. 75. Oh, I didn't see the first one then. Oh, heck no. 
75? Yeah. No, I didn't see the first ones. Uh uh-uh. uh. I didn't see them until probably, well, we couldn't. I was what, five years old? <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Nope. I didn't see the first ones. I saw some of the middle ones then or something. Oh, nope. Sorry. Not 75. 70. I apologize. I don't care. I didn't I see it when 70. I was 10. I don't oh. think I had a television then. Whatever. Okay. Anyways, they're basically like kind of, uh, I don't want to say like rebooting it, but they're basically kind of rebooting it and rebranding it and trying to bring it back into the fold is from what I read and heard. All right, but I'm not going to tell you my opinion, but I saw it, okay? And the only question I, oh, <laughs> well, I'll, I can talk about this when we do the review of Godzilla. Is it going to be but, 22 minutes long too? Of course. <laughs> No, I better go. This is too long. I told you 15 minutes and you were a slacker. Should I say bye, y'all? All you keep jabbering and jabbering and jabbering. You do you, Ma. It's your podcast. Oh, well, okay. I bet I should say bye, y'all, so I don't let anything out about the movie. Ooh. Well, I thought I usually end it and then you do your thing. No, you end it. Okay. Are you done? I'm done. Are you sure? I'm sure. 100%. 100. Yep. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening to Ma Hinshaw Loses Her Cookies, episode number 40. I apologize. Another lengthy podcast where we talk about literally nothing, but I'm sure most of you have turned this off by now. So go ahead, sit tight, and we'll be back next week with our review of Godzilla. Minus one. Bye, y'all.